بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه سلام اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا الشيء سهلا إن شاء الله everybody can see me and hear me okay الحمد لله we have um uh you know myself and Auntie Zaida who mashallah she is very she's a woman of many trades I would say and she's She's um, helping women. Uh, she coaches women, and she's been doing this. Uh, Auntie, I think you said, uh, was it plus 30 years, mashallah? She's been doing it for um, a long time, using different techniques um, to help uh, women, uh, Muslim women. And inshallah, we're going to hear from her. This um, this talk from Pain to Power, we st I started it with Ustava Samia two weeks ago. So I do want to give a little bit of a refresher um, for those who are there, but um, uh, there were a couple of things that um, I didn't even get to touch on. And I was like, you know, this is important. I wanted to finish these points. Uh, but the first thing I want to mention is that um, why uh, I, I feel like the uh, point that I realized that I, I really want to give this talk was uh, during Ramadan, um, I was giving a talk on actually, I think it was fiqh and spirituality. And uh, one of the things that the uh, hadith that I was uh, speaking about was a hadith of when Allah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the hadith Qudsi, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you know, um, my servant doesn't come close to me with anything more beloved to me than that which I have made fadled upon him. And then, you know, he comes, keeps getting closer to me with that, with the extras. Uh, and then at the end, he says, you know, uh, he says he, and he keeps getting closer to me until I love him. And I become the hand with which he strikes the, uh, the, the eye, I believe the eye with which he sees, I think uh, there is in the, the hand with which he strikes and the foot with which he walks or the leg with which he walks. And if he asks of me, I shall surely give him. And if he seeks protection of me, I will surely give him. I will surely protect him. And I remember in the comments, somebody says, oh, this is, well, like the people of Gaza, um, like they're they're so close to Allah. Um, but what can happen is um, when you think about, well, the people of Gaza, they're so close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them so much, so many difficulties but where is this part where he says, where if they ask of me, I shall surely give them. And if they ask, seek protection of me, I shall surely protect them. And I didn't get to address it then, but I was like, you know what? I have to talk about that because it could be a source of um, confusion for some people. Uh, and so what I spoke about last last time during this talk, when we spoke about Sina Ayub Adi Salaam, was that was um, uh, that is when I, when I during Ramadan also reading the story of Ayubadi Sadab, and I think it was just the next day I was reading. I was like, this is why I have to speak about it because when you read the story of Ayubadi Sadab and all the other prophets, what they went through, the difficulties they went through, you realize it's Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, yes, you know, when they ask of me, I shall give them, and the scholars say, except there are. We know from other hadith that this is qualified, that um, it's qualified like uh, because they, either Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives that person with exactly what they want or something better or delays their reward to later, right? So we know it's qualified. This asking or this giving is in different ways. And likewise with the prophets, of course they are the people of Allah. Of course they are closest to Allah. But we see, you know, um, with that, we see, see them going through such great tribulations, such great trials, so much pain. And so I wanted to, especially the same story of Sayyidina Ayyub, said, we know he was the prophet that was perhaps tried the greatest in terms of his outward, his physical, physically tried the greatest. But every single time, remember when um, in that report where Allah, where uh, Shaitan is going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, is there anyone amongst your servants 
well, if you give me authority over him, he would refrain to him. And he says, yes, Abdi Ayyub. You know, even in his um, talking of him, he's not present, but it's there's so much love that is my servant, my slave Ayyub. And so Shaytan, he goes to Ayub and he comes back and, you know, he asks permission from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give me power over his money. Give, and then he goes, you know, and then um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, okay, he, he allows him because why? Why is this? It's not because, oh, you know, um, he, he's of a less, and uh, Ayub alayhi salam, if he's, you know, making dua at this, time or asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's not because why doesn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answer him it's not because he's not of the that group of people that Allah you know we spoke in this hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it, it you know if he were to ask me I would surely give him of course he is of that people those people higher than their prophets right prophets are they say the prophets are um the awliya are at the feet of the prophets you know, they, they don't come even close to the prophets. They are so far from the prophets, the awliya, the, those people who are uh, those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves, right? They're so, uh, so th the love for the prophets is so much greater. But here, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving uh, shaitan permission, okay, you have your permit, take over his money, take it, then he comes back, give me permission over his children, Okay, you have permission over it, you know. Um, but at this this whole time, it, there is this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching, he's intimately involved in every single thing that Sina Ayyub Sanam is going through. So um I just wanted to mention that it's uh it was um uh Say, uh, Auntie Zayda, did you want to unmute now or when it is? A, inshallah, I will unmute you when uh, you will, uh, when it will be your turn. Okay. Bismillah. So, um, uh, so I wanted to mention that because it's very important to keep things in perspective that, uh, you know, we see until now, we see the people of. Gaza, people of Palestine, Yellow Latif, what they're going through, the hardships that they're going through, the the onslaught, the the slaughter that they're going through, right? And then you know we have reports coming, you know that these are people of dhikr, people of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, people of Quran, and people. So, and then if if a person who is um, sorry, I don't know, I don't want this to keep moving. If a person who um, doesn't understand these uh these concepts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will try those who he loves most and yes there are times will he will not outwardly answer those people he loves most he, he will not outwardly answer even the prophets he didn't answer to there are times when even the prophets their duas were not answered yes even our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam there were times where his dua was not answered and not because there is less, uh, there, the wilaya is, has gotten weak, not because the, the wilaya, the connection with them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the connection or the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, been taken away from him. No. And so, but rather because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring about a matter that he um, has written must come, must come to pass a matter that must come to pass and so when we see the people of Gaza of course that doesn't mean we're we're um we lay back and we relax and we're um you know complacent but yeah but uh, you know we work we do as much as we can but we understand that this um their their duas are not being outwardly manifest because of a matter that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to make uh, wants to bring about so um, I'm going to go now to my uh, notes of this back to what I wanted to actually uh, speak about then was um, two of the prophets of Sina uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam and Sina uh, Yaqub. 
And we'll start with Sina Ibrahim, Arisam is the father of Sina Yaqub. And so we'll start with him, Arisam. Sina. So one of um, the du'as that uh, the Sina Ibrahim السلام, mentions or is mentioned in the Quran um, is when uh, the Sina Ibrahim السلام, says, Rabbana inni askantu min dhurriyati biwadin ghayri dhi zar'in inda baytika al-muharrama Rabbana liyuqimu salah oh, oh, oh my Lord or our Lord inni I have indeed um, settled from my descendants in a in a valley that is has no zara in a dry valley that is is an uncultivated valley there's no plants in it and near your um sacred house oh uh, lord oh uh, our lord that they may establish prayer um and so and then he says uh, um, uh, and uh, so see how this his dua in this dua what is he mentioning in his dua he's mentioning you know sometimes we read this dua as, as you know oh he's he's making dua for his people in his dua he is mentioning a point of weakness for him. He's mentioning his weakness. He says, Oh Allah, I've 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 uh settled my family from my family in a place that has no no vegetation, like it has no uh, way to make um uh to for food. There there's no way to get food. Right? There there's it's it it doesn't have any food in there. I've settled my family there in a place that has no food. Oh Allah, for to for them to establish prayer next to your house, next to your end of end of al muharram, next to your sacred house, uh, that that they may establish prayer. Oh, Allah, I did this. I did all of this. I did this. I left them there, there in a place where there is no food, next to your house, that they may establish prayer for your sake. For you, I did this. And then, and then he makes a dua. So, oh Allah, so let their um, make the hearts of people inclined toward them, and provide them with fruits that they may be grateful. I mean, it the dua is incredible. This it, it's so um, subhanallah. It's so humbling when we see the way the prophets speak to Allah subhanahu wa taala in their pain in their pain, how they speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their, um, how they invoke, how they call upon the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how they ask for his mercy, how they ask for his blessings, right? In all of this, with complete like submission and uh, gratitude, submission and gratitude. And he says, Oh Allah, I have settled some of my descendants in an uncultivated valley. Now this is, is he, is he, he's not just saying, oh Allah, you know, the way that we usually read this, it's just rushing through it. But the way, if you feel the uh, feeling of Sina Ibrahim السلام, when he is saying the, this dua, feeling of Sina Ibrahim السلام, when he's saying this dua that I've I've uh, left them in an uncultivated valley near your house that they may um establish prayer and also this all done for what for you right saying you know this I've done I did this for you I did this for you I did this for you oh Allah the salah so that they may establish prayer so make amongst so make uh min al nasi um, so make the hearts from the people and the scholars say they don't, he didn't say he didn't say the heart is uh, hearts. He says, so make the hearts from people go towards them, incline towards them. I.e., the those people with that you know, so we can see in this that people who truly have hearts, not just 
the hearts of people or, you know, it, it has both those meanings. We can take the hearts of people and we love, we see people, everybody, right? As Ibrahim alayhi salam is beloved by everyone, you know, Muslims, Christians, Jews, every, everyone honors Abraham alayhi salam, right? But he says, but, but make the hearts from amongst people, meaning make the people who are the best of people go to them. And who went towards them? They're the Quraysh. Right? There was this dua answered. The best of people came to them that were Quraysh. They were the best of the... And other people don't realize this. It, the Muslims know this. The, but the Jews and the Christians, they don't know this. But we know that the best of the people were Quraysh because it was the family of the Prophet ﷺ. In their hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you know... Um, he says, uh, Allah looked upon creation when the Prophet is telling us about himself. He said, Allah looked upon creation and he despised them, except Baqaya, except the, the few that were left from the family of, um, uh, I believe, from the, Min, uh, from the family of Ibrahim. Uh, and, and he says, and then he looked and then, and then he chose Quraysh. He chose amongst them Quraysh and he chose amongst them. Um, you know, uh, and so he says how uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looked upon all of creation, but he, he despised them except a few. And from that, he chose Quraysh, and from them, he chose our Prophet. So then, uh, so here, he, you know, making this a lot how Zina Ibrahim I said, was coming to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his pain, but how he's saying, um, you know, uh, asking for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant him something using that pain and also using that he's saying, he, I, I did this, oh my Lord, I did this so that they would establish pr prayer, i.e. for your sake, I did this, right? And so make a, from, um, from the hearts of people, meaning people with who have hearts that can help him. So it's not just, you know, benefit from them in the worldly means, but benefit from them with guidance and with uh, with all the khair, because people who have people of hearts, people who are connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't keep khair from them. And it doesn't mean doesn't keep dunya from them, doesn't keep khair and barakah from them. And then and what is zukum and also give them risk from thamarat, from uh, fruits, so that they may be grateful. So, you know, I yes, I have uh, I have uh, kept them in this, this place that doesn't have vegetation, but uh, let people who are beloved to you go near them and also bless them with, give them risk, give them risk from fruits so that not, and he doesn't stop there, right? Just not give them risk from fruits, that's it. Give uruzukum so that they may be grateful. So that they may be grateful, always connected to his gratitude. So much submission and you know, even gratitude here. Now, when Sina Ibrahim Ali said, when he was thrown into the fire, this is another point I wanted to talk about. It's very important. Um when uh the um there's a narration, and a lot of people speak about this narration, when he was thrown in, so he was catapulted. He was shot out of catapult into the, this huge fire that was built for him for him in those split seconds before he reached the fire. Okay, it was as though subhanAllah, like everything was it was paused. But what happens in these few split seconds was that um uh some of the tafsir uh tafsir or mentions this that Sina Jibrida Ali Sara came to, to to him and asked him, um, do you have any need for me? Um, uh, he says, uh, let me just read what it says in this, in the tafsir. That is narrated um, on the authority of Ka'ab Ka ibn al-Ahbar. Uh, al-Ahbar, uh, he, he was of the, he used to be of the um, Jews. So he had knowledge of the book. So there's uh, some narrations that he has are from the uh, from the people of the book. So he says it's narrated that when they tied him up and they threw him into the fire, he said, uh, "La ilaha illa ant, la ilaha illa ant, uh, subhan, 
Subhanak Ya Rab. Um, and all the worlds, praise be to you, and dominion be belongs to you, and you have no partner. And they threw, threw him into the fire, and um, Jibreel salam, came and met him, and they said, Oh, Ibra yeah, Ibrahim, do you need something? Do you have a need? And he said, As for you, or to you, no. And Jibreel, Jibreel then he said, And then ask your Lord. And Ibrahim salam, said, It is sufficient for me um, that he, to ask him, like, Yakfini that he knows my situation. Like I'm not going to ask him, but it's enough that he knows my hat, that he knows my situation. And here, some um, people of uh, knowledge and a lot of so a, a lot of uh, the Salafis actually, we hear them say, "How? What kind of narration is this? Uh, how? Why didn't he ask for Allah Subhanahu wa Taala? Why didn't he make du'a?" Whereas the Prophet ﷺ, he taught us that making du'a is so important and there's so many narrations of du'a. And of course, you know, even, you know, if you're um, one of your shoelace, the, the lace of your shoe is broken, um, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give, give you the the lace of your shoe, right? That it, how much du'a that we make to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? So what is this? How how can this be even correct? Um and subhanAllah, I feel like, you know, they're, they, it's putting the prophets into this mold that they want to put them in. That this one mold, and all the prophets are in one mold. Like, oh no, you know, of course the Prophet Sallallahu taught us, yes, to make dua and to ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for everything. But are they going to be in one state and every single time they get a problem, you know, even us, as we know, you know, we're not prophets, but we know our states are different. When we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, depending on our state, we ask him in different ways, right? We ask him, you know, begging him for this way, ask using certain words, certain names of his in another way, certain duas in another way. The prophets, we have to give them that allowance that they are, they are people of amazing spiritual states. An amazing deep knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to dismiss this narration to say, oh, of course it's it's not correct, is 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 getting ahead of ourselves. Rather, um, what we I prefer to do is that to see this as another way that Ibrahim alayhi salam is asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in him saying. You know, I, his knowledge of my state uh, is more, you know, it, it is enough for me. Why? In that, he's not using his tongue. He's not using his dhikr. He's not using his tongue to ask. He's using his heart. He's using his state. Like, I am about to be seconds away from being thrown into the fire for your sake, oh Allah. You know what is going through my body, through my heart, through my being. You and I want you. I don't want anyone else. And I don't want an interference from anyone else. And this is the, the pain, right? This is how we go to Allah with our pain. That he is saying, you know, to Sina Jibreel, he said, I'm no. And even in uh, the um, narration of Bukhari, it's not that the Allah, uh, the Sina Ibrahim alayhi salam, he didn't make dua. He said the last word of Ibrahim. So this is we we definitely take the narration of Bukhari, Imam Bukhari, right? So it was he says Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu. He says the last word of Ibrahim alayhi salam when he was thrown thrown into um, the fire or before he was thrown into the fire was Hasbunallah when he met Bukhari. So it's not that he didn't make dua, but he said Hasbunallah when he met Bukhari. Hasbunallah, Allah suffices me. And he is the best of those who, uh, the wakil, he's the best wakil for me. He's the best of one who disposes of affairs, who I give my affair to, and he will take care of it. He's the best of who, who will take care of my affairs. He said that. And so we know we can also take, um, uh, you know, this, this we we can understand, take both of them as it happened that Jibreel alayhi salam came to uh, Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, ask him, do you need help? And maybe he said, I don't need help from you. Because why he was in a state of 
and uh of that i want allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i want i i only want allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save me i only want and of course if jibreel alayhi salam saved him who is that from that's from allah right and he knows that but he wanted something this closeness with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this direct divine intervention that that he knew he could get he knew he would get he could get and that's why i say there is um i, I mentioned this which i love from i've heard from sheikh samer nas habibullah he says the prophets you know our prophet spe specifically speaking about our prophet they knew the front ways and the back ways to allah subhanahu they know the front the ways you know that you go to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the front way the the main way but they also knew the back ways meaning what does it mean the back ways the the shortcuts and the ways that that you can get through to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that other people aren't familiar with. You know, here, you know, showing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, okay, no, Jibreel said, I'm coming. Everybody was like, yes, help me. Of course, I need help. You know, of course, look, I'm about to go into the fire. Help me. He was like, no, no, I want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He wants di direct divine intervention. And um, in, in a narration uh, that the, all uh, the uh, creatures, we know that uh, in narration, the, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu said, uh, I believe this is in Bukhari as well, when Ibrahim said, was thrown into the fire, all the creatures of the world were trying to put the fire out. This is a wali. This is a wali. All the creatures of the world, they came and they tried to put the fire out, except a wazakh, except the lizard, it was blowing the fire on Ibrahim alayhi salam. And that is why to this day, he said that, that we, um, when we see a lizard, we, we kill it. It's not, it's not a, uh, it's not like a, uh, an animal that we spare. We kill the lizard because of what it did on that day, you know, and it has that, uh, it has that inheritance to all the lizards, right? Because of that, it's action on that day when Ibrahim alayhi salam was thrown into the fire. All the creatures of the world, the the lions, the elephants, the you know the the fish, you know, Subhanallah, how all of them were connected to see that Ibrahim alayhi salam. Could those people around watching could they see that? No, but we know that in the ghaib, that re remember when we said the um the wali, the person who Allah subhanahu wa taala is connected to. And not remember, but the the hadith. Remember the hadith that um, that when Allah subhanahu wa taala, when Allah loves a person, he he sa says to Jibreel alayhi salam, "Love this person for I love I love him." And Jibreel alayhi salam says, uh, you know, to the angels and to to all the creation to I love this person because Allah loves him, and then and his love is put uh, around uh, across the world, right? And because of this. You know, we can imagine the the love of Sayyidina Ibrahim said, across the world. So he says, when he was thrown into the fire, all the creatures of the world were trying to put out the fire. Even you know, say they were across the planet, like in another place. But because of their love, right? Sometimes when somebody you love someone so much, you're connected to them. You feel things that feel their pain, and so all the creatures were trying to. But the lizard, and that is. Why um, in a narration, they say, in a narration of Sahih Bukhari, we, we kill the lizard because it was the lizard that tried to um, blow, it was blowing the smoke on Sina Ibrahim alayhi salam. So with this, all the creatures of the world trying to defend him from the fire, and Sina Jibreel alayhi salam, but he refused the help except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This, I'm, I want to mention this because this is, this is not just, it's not just going through, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your pain, but it is co going you it, it, it Allah Ibrahim alayhi salam is showing how to get like um invoking you know just the presence, the qudra of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his his power directly, how he knew to that, you know, I'm going to refuse everybody, but I want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's just, it's a beautiful way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, um, intervening through that. Now, um, uh, lastly, just uh, I wanted to speak a little bit about Sina Yaqub salam and how, of course, we know um, his pain 
with the uh, loss, the suffering of uh, his his yearning for his son, that his son was, um, you know, missing. And here in his case, and those um, uh, those who have lost loved ones or uh, or even they are missing or in jail or imprisoned, what a uh, grave state to be in. And we see, and we don't belittle that state at all. We see Tzina Yaakov, what he went through. And we we should never belittle the pain of someone going through pain, someone going through loss. because And never, you know, um, sometimes we hear this, that, oh, we are people of Iman, we're not going to, um, you know, of course, you know, sometimes people say this in order to uh, encourage people, lift people up. So it depends on the intention. But in terms of saying, you know, oh, how could somebody with Iman be depressed or be sad? You know, uh, of course, you know, so look at Sina Yaqub, he was um, he was in such a difficult situation. He was so saddened and broken hearted and he cried so much that he was he became blind with his crying. Right. He became blind from his crying. And. um but with this, with all of this, he says, I, I only can complain of my um my my brokenness, my my sadness, and my uh, difficulty to Allah. Right? Yeah, uh, when he um this is when uh uh and I know from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what you do not know meaning he knew even though he knew he was shown a prophecy the, uh, Sina, uh, uh, Yusuf alayhi salam he told him of this prophecy right so he knows that it will um, things will come back things will come uh, things will be better but that did not prevent him from being sad Right? And when he when the when his sons came back from Egypt and then his other son also went and um, so he lost you know he lost Yusuf Adisam then Benj Benjamin Adisam and also the other uh, uh, elder son that said he wouldn't come back until he forgave him so he lost all these sons and then he says um, and he's so saddened and broken hearted. And he says, and then he turned away from them. And he said, Yusuf. He said, how, oh, my sadness for Yusuf. And that is when his eyes became whitened, i.e. from blind, from, from Huzan. And he was someone who held on um, uh, to his sadness. He is someone who kept his sadness inside. Galim is just holding on to the sadness. And so, um, again, you know, uh, a prophet, an example of a prophet that is so saddened and so uh, um, broken, right, to uh, going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his um with his with his pain when he says you know innama ashkubathi was frizni in Allah that that is where our where do we turn where do we go to to place our pains and our troubles to you know everyone we complain to they don't want to hear of our complaints but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is the one who wants to hear about complaints and not just that he loves to hear about our complaints he turns when we turn to him he turns to us in with our with our um uh when we turn to him with our complaints he turns to us with with giving you know with giving e either exactly what we want or giving us better than it right so every single time we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and um uh remember I think I may have mentioned in the, in the last class um, I'm not sure, but Allah subhanahu when uh, our Prophet says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I am in, I am with those who are brokenhearted. Yes, I think I did mention it. Uh, and so when we have our pain, remember that I am with those who are brokenhearted for my sake. When we are brokenhearted, go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your broken hearts. Go to him with your broken hearts. Say, this is what happened to me. 
this is what happens to me. And you are our Lord, right? You are my Lord. Go, go to him with your broken heart. Just like, um, and another uh, way that the Sahaba went to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with their broken, they went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with things that were broken. And I heard this the other day and I was like, subhanAllah, it's so beautiful. Remember when Sina Urkasha, when he was fighting in Badr with his sword, his sword broke. And he went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with his broken sword. He's like, I can't fight anymore. My sword is broken. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave him a stick. He said, take the stick and fight with it. When, when you're, and the stick turned into a strong sword and he was able to continue fighting. But the point of that story, subhanAllah, we see it's a miracle. Also, we take our pains, we take our brokenness. The Sahaba would take what was broken with them to the Prophet They would take, when your sword is broken, when you can't fight anymore, go to the Prophet Go to the Prophet and he will give you something better. He will give you a better sword. You may not be able to see that it's a sword. You may not see that it's a sword right away. Right? Just like Sayyidina Arkasha. They, he was given a stick. But when he held it, it turned into a sword. But the, outwardly, pe some people may not have realized that this is, this is going to be better than the sword that he broke. But with whatever it is that's hurting us, when we see the people of Gaza, when we see our brothers and sisters, you know, being tortured and tormented, right? When we go, go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, we are broken. We have all, all the doors were shut on our faces. All the doors, we, we tried to, you know, do these encampments. We tried to do that. They were shut and destroyed and, you know, closed down and et cetera, et cetera. Go to, go to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they will give you something. And it may be something that others, we won't even see. We won't even know that this is our sword that we will continue fighting. Right? But we intend that. We will go to them. And we, we hope that they will give us that strength. We know from his sunnah is to give us that strength. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When we go to him for madad, for help, for reinforcement. Madad. It means help, and it also means reinforcement. When we ask for reinforcement, help us. We we can't we can't do this by ourselves. We will get that reinforcement. You know, we we know go to them knowing that we will get that um, reinforcement, inshallah. And uh, I'll just um, end by saying that you know when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in the Quran, and I know that uh, Auntie Zaida will be taught speaking about this as well. When um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, um, indeed, we will try you, we'll, t we'll test you by something of, of fear and hunger and um, taking away from your wealth and your pe your persons, death, you know, from uh, taking away from your wealth and your, um, you know, uh, from your numbers, right? For your, your per people, meaning death and your fruit. And give glad tidings to those who are patient, those who, when a musiba, when a difficulty has been has befallen them, they say, "Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun." And really, when we say this, remember the meaning of it. That in indeed to Allah, we are we we are for Allah, and to Him we return. Meaning, all these things that we had, our our wealth our children or our the people that we lost the uh, the fruits that we've lost it was for who it was it ours or was it for allah it was allah's to begin with right we know that this is is an amana for allah so we said in in narida for us us and everything of ours is for allah wa inna ilayhi rajun and to him we are returning and that in both those statements, there is so much comfort for the lovers. There's so much comfort that when we say we are for Allah, our whatever, our losses, our brokenness, our where where are um, that we are not whole, 
right? We are not whole. We're, we're just parts of us that are shattered everywhere. We are Allah's. Even though we're we're not we're not good, we're not we're broken and we're we're sad and we're depleted, right? We are Allah's. And to have that, to be of Allah's, to be connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how great of a thing that is, right? How great of a thing that is. And last time one of the sisters mentioned this, and I actually and I actually um put a note, I forgot to, uh, I neglected to mention that um she mentioned a uh, saying of Sina uh, um Ibn Al Ta'ala. And I, I don't I forgot which which one she mentioned, but I had made a note uh, to mention uh, one of the things he says, uh, what has someone lost who has found you? Right. And maybe that was the note that she made <clears throat> as well. What what has one lost who has found you? You know, if you lose everything, but you have found Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you have that connection with Allah, what have you truly lost? And what has somebody gained who has lost you? So in all of our losses, we go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If it connects us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this isn't a loss. This isn't a loss. And this is what our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, taught us. And this is what he tried to instill in us. In every, what, how great is the matter of the mu'min, of the believer. In everything, in all of his matters, it is khayr. When he has a difficulty, he praises Allah, and that is khayr for him. And if he has a he has a good he uh, if he has a good he praises Allah and that is good for him and if he has a difficulty he is patient and that is good for him you know so in all our matters in our good and our difficulties we um, if we are connected to Allah this matter even though it's truly difficult and outwardly it's so difficult it is truly what is best for for us because we have to know true tawakkul to reliance of Allah is to know that every single thing that happens to us, not just the good things, but even the bad things, the things that we dislike, the hate, you know, and dislike and hate and we don't want, even the bad things are for our benefit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us those things for our benefit. And he says in the Quran, you know, uh, maybe there are things that you disliked, but they are good for you. He's telling the Sahaba and telling us all, perhaps there are things that you dislike but they are good for you and perhaps there are things that you like that are not good for you um that are evil for you and that are bad for you so with that you know inshallah may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us people or who keep um allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with us wherever we go and whatever the hurt we have take it back to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and change that hurt how can we tra transform it into you know dua that will bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also action, also action, which I didn't mention this time, but also action in terms of, you know, changing what um, I briefly touched on last time that, you know, when whatever your pain is to turn that, how can you benefit yourself? Of course, it's a lesson for yourself, right? First and foremost, it's a lesson, it's a tarbiya, it's a growing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to have this growing, have this um, changing. Right, but what is the benefit? So always try to find that like silver line in the cloud, right? Because that is the way our Prophet taught us. The other day, I want to just close with this. The other day, I had, um, I had a fight with, uh, with someone, and I realized, or you know, I was trying to get a fight, or it turned into a fight because I was trying to get, um, this person to realize what was, uh, what I wanted, what I wasn't getting. But I realized later on when I realized, I said, that person, instead of giving me what I wanted, um, they became defensive. And when I, later on, when I was thinking about it, I was like, you know, I didn't inspire them to give that to me. I didn't inspire them to give me what I wanted. And I realized how much power I have that, you know, depending on the words I choose, depending on the tone of voice, I come with, depending on my expressions, you can either inspire someone or put some, that person on a fight or flight where they, they want to fight you or they want to just go away from you, or you, or you can inspire them to come to you and, you know, actually deliver that what you want. And at that point, I didn't inspire that person to come and be, be in a warm, in a warm 
um, you know, feel that way that they would open up and be willing to give. And um, so from that, like pain, which I had in terms of, it was a negative experience, but I learned from that, that I need to change my, um, my delivery, right? They would change way, the, the way I act. And so I can get more of, um, get what I want because I, you know, depending on the way that you give something is uh, a lot of people, you know, that's why they react because it's a way, it's not just, they started it. Sometimes it's, a, it's they're reacting from what they see. So anyhow, that's just an example I wanted to show uh, about how um, practically just recently how I got, um, uh, you know, inshallah benefited from something that was negative to me. And inshallah, I will um, stop there. And uh, I um, will ask uh, Auntie Zaida, I'll unmute you, uh, Auntie Zaida, now. Or I've asked you to unmute. So um, whenever she is ready, inshallah, is she, um, Auntie Zaida, just... Um, uh, a little bit about her. Uh, she, as I mentioned before, mashallah, she's been coaching um, women for, uh, was it 30 plus years, auntie? It's about 30, 30 years. plus years, mashallah. And she's, um, I got to know her through Sarah, my coach, Sarah Matic. She was like on her cherished Muslim team. And I was really impressed with her. There was one time I, I mentioned to this to auntie the other day too, um, I don't know. I don't remember what discussion we were having, but auntie was sending, she was sending so many like messages and there were, each of them were filled with so many gems. And I remember also she had um, written out like this. Um, I think it was just, you know, uh, uh, a message of how, you know, when you are going through difficulties, do this and do this and do this. And it there was so much benefit in that little text. I remember sending it to my friend who was going through a lot and she she felt so much benefit at, from it. And I remember after months after that, I would go back to it and re read that text. And unfortunately, I've lost it because it's been years now. But um, just these things that uh, there's real like gems that mashallah, she's done a lot of, she's done so many different trainings um, Reiki, I think she's been doing, you know, it's different therapies and different tra t trainings to um, help women. And um, inshallah, I pray that this will be a practical, like healing session. Inshallah, I'll let her uh, take over. Bismillah. Inshallah. Thank you, sister. A'udhu billahi minish shaitani rajeem. Bismillah rahman rahim Subhanallahi walhamdulillahi. Wa la ilaha illallahu wallahu akbar. ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نبض وإياك نستعين إحدنا السراط المستقيم سراط الذين نمت عليهم غير المكتوب عليهم ولا التالين آمين السلام عليكم سيستاز can everybody hear me? Yes? Yes, alhamdulillah, we can hear Alhamdulillah, you. that's good. Okay, inshallah, Sister uh, Ustada Rasta asked me if I could do healing session today. And uh, today this session is to do with like personal development, um, the Quranic focus on self-improvement because she gave me a little bit insight. There are sisters who are going through like a difficult time. Um, there might be different scenarios. Like for example, someone might have gone through divorce or lost a child or some sisters are trying for a child and they can't conceive. And uh, there might be children with um, special needs or mental health problems, physical uh, disability. And that's very, very difficult. So it can be very, very tiring. So inshallah, we'll give some tools today um, on how to overcome these things and stay in a um, good state of mind because uh, we are spiritual beings in a physical body and we have to nurture our spirit to be connected to ourselves and to be connected to Allah. 
you know, when we feel low or we feel all these negative emotions, which I'm going to explain in a little while, we can disconnect with ourselves and we go into a loop and we get fixed and we get uh, stuck in old patterns and we don't realize and we are ruminating and we go over those thoughts again and again and all behaviors and they become very uh, self-limited beliefs, a limited way of thinking, negative way, right? Is everybody understanding what I'm saying? Yes? Good, okay. Yeah, just give me yes, yes, when I ask, inshallah. So we'll be exploring heal, um, healing and wellness with Islamic principles and Islamic guidelines. Thank you, Sister Aisha, for your feedback. Thank you, alhamdulillah. Uh, we will look into affiliation with pain. You know, what does that mean, affiliation with pain? It becomes so normal when we've gone through a trauma and then we don't like to think about it. So what we do, we block it in the unconscious mind. You know, the brain says, oh, no, no, no. This is very traumatic for you to think about it. I'll protect you. I won't let you think about it. It's not that we do it consciously. It happens automatically. So it goes to the back of the head. This is where the hippocampus is. And all the memories are there. Like some scholars have said, even when we were with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, when he created us and he said, am I not your Lord? And we said, you are. Even that memory, some people can go back to that. They can go back to memory when they were in their mother's womb. Subhanallah, right? And um, we'll be exploring how these uh, memories, they affect us and we don't want to face them. So, But unconsciously, it's like the music running on, on in the background. You know, when you go for shopping and you go into a store and there's a the music on and then you get used to, like I remember sisters used to say before, look, oh, I don't want to go into a shop, you know, in the malls for shopping. They got the music on and we're listening to this haram music. But it's like uh, you can be in a state of high liquor, you know, inwardly, very connected. And that's like the background music, you know, that won't affect your heart. But first of all, to recognize them, we've got to look at them. What is that we are stuck with? So if we don't face it and we don't acknowledge and we don't accept, yes, I'm feeling low. Yes, I'm feeling angry. I'm feeling depressed. I'm feeling sad, all these things, then we can't do anything about it because we don't know what's wrong. Now, so we become affiliated with the pain. It's normal, you know, to feel low and to feel bad and not to feel happy and to feel anxious. That becomes our way of being. So we're going to look at how to review. Review is looking at a situation, not because uh, I want you to go through pain, but first of all, we have to review what is it that's causing me pain? What is the cause? We have to identify it. Once we've identified it, it's very important to allow ourselves to feel that emotion, right? And then we look at it and we review, and do I want to keep this emotion now or do I want to heal and bless it from my life? I need to give it back to Allah. I need to recharge. And I think Sister Shaisa was saying like about the prophets, they went through a, pain, a lot of pain. Hazrat Yaqub, you know, he became blind with the, the grief being separated from his beloved son, Yusuf, and even the Prophet, you know, when he lost his son, Ibrahim, and you know, when somebody passes away, people are understanding now, like straight away, I come from Africa, from Kenya, and there nobody was allowed to cry. Either they would cry and wail and tear their clothes and, oh my God, you've gone and why did you have to go? It was my turn to go. So these are the things that we should be aware from our tongue. Or people went very quiet. Everybody said, oh, no, 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 no. You have to do sabr. You have to do sabr. Don't cry. But it's very important to cry, right? Allah gave the tears. And in the tears, there is a hormone that heals our heart. But if um, I don't cry consciously, but when I'm doing my work, suddenly a memory might come up. Say I've lost my child. And then I remember that child. And then I might start feeling all the sad emotions. And I start crying. And then I leave all the washing and I go and lie down. I'm feeling so tired. I can't cope with life. So that's what happens, right? We are going to review, look at what's giving us pain. And then learning how to let it go and recharge so that we can heal 
Now there's very, the core objectives of Islam is like to protect five things, right? The first is life, it's, it's like very sacred to protect a life. One life is more sacred than the Kaaba, the Prophet said, right? And then we have to protect our faith. We have to protect our intellect, our sanity. You know, mental health is very, very important. And uh, Alhamdulillah, our people are understanding mental health now. Whereas before, you know, it was just like, oh, my daughter, she's crying and uh, her voice is very heavy, it changes. And I'm sure she's got a jinn or she's got Nazar or somebody has done magic. But that, that is that, but that is Barhaq. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the rukyas for that and the duas from the Quran, you know, Ayat al-Kursi, Four Quls, Surah Baqarah, and other ways to protect ourselves. Doing the rukya that will protect us. But there is also the mental health. When someone's very emotional, or if they cry, they say, oh, why do you keep on crying? You know, stop crying. Or if somebody's happy, they'll say, well, what's wrong? Why are you happy? So can you see? Does it make sense? Anybody had that experience? And we have, and we have to protect our... Um, like um, uh, property and society. These are five things that are very sacred. So we need to protect our mind. You know, this is the frontal lobe. Can you see what I'm touching? The forelock? Allah thought Nasiya. Allah SWT talks about that, you know, in the Quran, that this is where the brain understands. It is the hierarchy, you know, the it is like the king. It's got all the intellect, understanding, wisdom. From here, uh, the other parts of the there are many other parts but this is the part that understands but when we are emotional then this shuts down and we can't think rationally right now when we are thinking here the heart feels what we think the heart feels the heart like the prophet sallallahu said um to develop the best version of yourself we have there's a hadith like prophet sallallahu said the kalla yeah the heart must be turning. What that means, like uh, constantly our heart gets attached to things, right? When we are not in reminders, we are not doing in dhikr, or we get into dunya, which is normal. Allah SWT says, that's one very beautiful hadith, that when my servant remembers me, he comes like into a safe refuge, right? And then the angels are there, they do dwarf in his heart. They bring the noor and the light. And that is when we are feeling very comfortable and uh, we feel sukoon and peace and tranquility. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when my servant forgets me, then the angels leave and the shaitans are just lurking outside the heart. They come in and they bring darkness and then they bring all that worries, anxieties which affect our heart, fear, uh, pain, it might be like anger, frustration, uh, guilt, uh, resentfulness. They affect our heart. And then from that, because this is not working then, the brain is not working, the intelligent brain, I get very emotional and my thoughts are irrational. So it's about recognizing what am I thinking? Is this serving me? Is this going to help me develop a best version of myself? Recognizing the need to change. Yes? Please give me a yes if you're understanding, sisters. Inshallah. Now, there is emotional pain, uh, which is to do with losses. So I must have lost, uh, might have gone through a divorce, lost my spouse, lost my house, lost my job, lost a child, lost a relationship. Um, all these kind, these are losses yeah, which affect us. Um, different kind of emotions affect different parts of the physical body like people who have a lot of fear, worry, anxiety, they get a lot of irritable bowel syndrome, right? And people who have been through a lot of abuse, they've been abused verbally, physically, emotionally, or sexually, they become like, they get problems with their ovaries and their womb, prostate gland for men. And people who have been through a lot of, um, they've been abused, and um, they got a lot of anger, resentment inside them, they get problem with ulcers which later also is linked with uh, cancers yeah i'm not saying all of that is emotional but a lot of these illnesses are developed from these emotional uh, negative emotions because the minute we are negative 
the hormones, that hormone comes down and it goes down into the organ, the kind of emotion we're having, and it affects, it affects that organ. And Prophet Sallallahu said, there's a piece of flesh in the body. And if that is wholesome, then the whole body is wholesome. And if that is corrupt, the whole body is corrupt. And that is the heart, the mudka, yeah? The kalp, it must be rotating, it must not be fixated with anything, with the dunya. Yeah, dunya is there to use, alhamdulillah. We have it, alhamdulillah. When we don't have it, we've got to start looking, like Sister Shasta was saying, at, um, you know, gratitude. What have I got? Subhanallah, you know, since this uh, Palestine started, and I look at my house, I'm sitting, and I feel for those people. There was a story of a doctor. She said that she uh, was rescued. She was the last one to come out of the rubble. All her family died. And she started crying. She was a psychologist. And the people like thought, oh, her family's died. And they said, they started consoling her. And she said, no, no, I'm not crying for them. I'm crying for, crying for myself. What did I do? Allah didn't take me, right? And then she started wandering from house to house. People told, gave her space. You can sleep here. And she said, I was hungry. You, you don't know how much salty water we drank. And the more salty water we drink, the more thirsty we become. And she said she was hungry. I was hungry. I was really hungry. She said it three times. And you can't imagine that like, fasting is no hunger. And she said somebody gave her a quarter piece of bread on her hand. And she looked at it. And it was like somebody gave her a gold piece on her hand. And she took a bite of that bread. And she just couldn't stop looking at that bread. Right? And then later she went to a hospital. And there she met a girl. And they said this girl, all her limbs were chopped off. Right? Her hands and legs. And she had to travel to another country to be seen in hospital. So they asked her, you're alone and she's alone. Could you go with her, please? And she said yes. And when she went there, she saw... Um, lots of other children. And these children had gone through trauma. So she became a surrogate mother for so many children. And then they said, because somebody told her, the reason why Allah didn't take you, you have a purpose still on earth. And that day she said she understood why Allah didn't take her, because she had to look after all these children who had gone through trauma. She was a trauma psychologist, right? So she worked with works with these children. So now the heart has to be soft and turning. But it also has to be firm upon the upon the deen. Yeah. We know we need to give it appropriate development, nourishment. And there are so many beautiful du'as. Allah make my tongue truthful and make me firm upon the truth, right? Like we work on our physical body. If I'm weak, I might go to the gym and try to make my arms and my legs strong, my muscles. But we also have that's the outer body, and the inner might be very weak. If somebody says something like, ah, you know, I just can't go away. I just have a big tantrum and I start crying because it's pushing my buttons. I've got triggers, dysphoria, yeah? From I have anxiety, I might have worries, sadness, unhappiness, self-doubt, grief, grief, guilt. A lot of people feel guilty. It's my fault. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have said that. That's why that happened. Uh, might have anger, fears, etc. So we become disconnected with ourselves because we are in a very low state of, you know, emotional self. And this brain is not working. So we feel disconnected with ourselves, a disconnect with the world and disconnect with Allah. Is that making sense? <coughs> Sisters, is that making sense? Somebody give me a yes. Okay. And Jazakallah. Nusayba. Now, we will do theory. That's the theory I gave you, yeah? Practice, inshallah, how to let go of your uh, worries, fears, your sadness, your losses, your grief. And uh, then, inshallah, at the end, we will share the outcome, okay? In the Quran, like Sister Shaita said before, Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Surah Baqarah, Ayat 155, Wala Right? Surely we will test you with something of fear and hunger. Fear could be from anything. I fear a lion or I fear uh, 
I'm going to lose my job. What will happen to my house? Am I going to lose that? How will I pay my bills? Can be all sorts of fear. I might fear someone who's very oppressing me. They shout at me. I'm too scared to talk back. And I will test you with hunger, some loss in goods or lives or the fruits of your toil, right? Things that we value and we gathered and our hearts are very attached to them. Allah might test them, test us with them. We might lose them because he can see our attachments in our heart. Everybody has a different attachment. Not everybody is the same. Allah created us different with different qualities and different strengths and weaknesses, right? And Allah Ta'ala says, give glad tidings to those who patiently persevere, who say when afflicted with calamity, to Allah we belong and to whom it, to him is our return. Qalu inna lillahi wa inna lehi rajiun. These are those on these are those now listen on whom descend blessings from Allah and mercy, and they are the ones that are that receive guidance. So remembering Allah in our losses, um, we have to train ourselves. It's just like a muscle. We have to put a reminder. Like for many years, I put I've still got a reminder on my table outside where I sit in the kitchen. You know, I eat there, I study there. It's like liquor connection reminder. It's for myself to have my connection. Like every time I eat, what does it mean connection? I have to say Bismillah. And I have to thank Allah for this food. When I finish, I have to finish with my dua. And what I'm at, when I'm washing my dishes, you know, negative thoughts come to me at that time. And then I'm, oh my God, why am I thinking this? Right. This is the thought from the shaitan. He's trying to make me emotional now. Well, I'll be lahim in the rajim. That's finished. That's the past. It's gone. I'm here now. I'm going to work for my future. I want to be with Allah. So <clears throat> it is through our test that Allah will, will recognize us and we'll get to know ourselves, right? Um, we have a sense of fear, like cert to a certain degree, there's, there's so many job losses in um, COVID, wasn't there? And even now, business hasn't really picked up. Like my son had a shop, he had to close it down. And even now, he had a second-hand furniture shop. Nobody wants the second-hand things. Like, yeah, it might be germs there or whatever, right? And uh, we might be tested with a hunger. Um, there were so many people who were hungry, Look at Palestine. I just told you that story of that lady. And we see every day the children are starving there. Some people, they might be isolated. Um, they've got no one to sit with them, to talk with them, to eat with them. Yeah, they get depressed as well because we've been made to be with the humans. Our nature is to be with other people. And some people might be ill. They got no one to cook for them, so they don't eat. Some people might be lying in hospitals in tubes. We'll have loss of wealth. You know, so many in incomes have been diminished. People are struggling with finances. Loss of life, people die. And Sister Shaita was telling me that some sisters have lost their child. And, you know, so um, when we, you know, I'll tell you a story. It's, it's from my family, right? My brother's grandson, they had four children. Uh, the son, he had four children. So the oldest one, he was nearly 12, he's 11 and a half, and he died from something very simple. He got infection, it became very infectious, and then he just died very quickly in a day before the doctors got all the results and everything. And the mother became so depressed, like she had three other children, but she couldn't look after her other three children. The My sister-in-law had to go and take care of the children because um, there's no one to take care of them. The mother's very depressed. So we've got to look at, you know, like Allah chose to take him. And this story I want to tell you, you know, we know the hadith, like Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that when you lose a child, right, before the age of puberty, that child has been promised Jannah, right? He's innocent. On the day of judgment, Allah Ta'ala will say to the child, enter Jannah, O child, a boy or a girl. But the child will say, no, Allah, I want to hold the hands of my parents, my father and mother, I want to take them with me to Jannah. And then Allah Ta'ala will say, okay, hold their hand and enter Jannah now. So maybe this sister, Allah wants her to have Jannah for the mother and father by an inna lillahi wa inna lehi rajiun. Our children come from us, but they don't belong to us. If we go to the graveyard, you'll find little graves, big graves, 
isn't it? Right? And nobody is guaranteed they'll live up to 70. I thank Allah every day because I'm 70. Prophet Sallallahu said, my ummah will live to mostly around the age of 60. Every day about the, above that is a gift to them. So I've got to be very careful because my time is limited. Every day is a gift. I better sort myself out. Yes, inshallah. Nobody has been guaranteed. So some children, some sisters might have gone through loss of relationship, divorce. Um, there's a beautiful story. This is like theory, I'm telling you. So you get this in your mind. Um, sisters who have gone through divorce, this is for you. Um, you know, one Sahabia, she got married, then she got divorced and she came to the Prophet Sallallahu and she said, how come I got divorced? I did istihara before I got divorced, but as, uh, before I got married and I'm divorced now. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, he said, if you hadn't got divorced, maybe something worse would have happened. Allahu alam. Yeah. Maybe she would have had a relationship without getting married. Allah knows. But she got married. And at that time, that was good for her. And there was another story all of you must know. I forget the name of the Sahabia. I'm not, is it Um Salama? Sister um, Ustada can tell me. Uh, you know, her, she, her husband was one of the 10 promised Jannah. Ashra Mubashra, and news came that he has died. And the Prophet Sallallahu was there with her and he told her, read the dua, Inna lillahi wa inna lahi rajiun, Allahumma ajirni fi musibati, wa hlufli khairum minha. And she read that dua and after her iddat finished, one of a sahabi came, a sahabiya came and she brought the proposal for marriage from the Prophet Sallallahu but she went to him and she said like she was really like amazed. She said, when you told me to do that dua, when the news came of my husband, I thought, well, who uh, who was um, better than my husband? Who could it be? Yes, Um Salima. Was he not of the one? Her husband, I've heard from the story, sister. Her husband, the one who died, was from one of the 10 promised Jannah. And she thought, who's better than him? But anyway, we'll check that story, yes? Jazakallah. And um, then the Prophet Sallallahu proposed for her. And then she said, look, there are three things. One, I'm older than you. Second, I've got three children. Lastly, I get angry very quickly. So the Prophet Sallallahu told her, look, if you're old, I'm going towards old age as well. Your children are my children. And for your anger, I will do a, do dua to Allah to make it less. And he married her. So you don't know. Read the dua. If you're missing your spouse a lot, you're missing your married life. And sometimes we've made mistake and we carry guilt. And if I hadn't done that, or if I had behaved this way, today I wouldn't, wouldn't be alone. But that's happened, gone and dusted. All we can do is there was a lesson to learn. Like Sister Shaisa was saying, she had a disagreement from someone with someone. And then she realized later when reflecting that, um, you know, what was she being taught? We are being taught lessons. This is how you get hikmah, you become wise through pain, through suffering, you become very wise person. And the Prophet ﷺ said, around the age of 40 is the age of wisdom. You become very wise. You've been through your own journey, losses, sadness, grief, etc. And you watch other people. So you know, you become very wise. And then you come to a place where you can guide others. Like the Prophet ﷺ, he said, when you want to ask for guidance, Ask somebody, four people he mentioned. Uh, we can't just go to anybody. If I had a fight with my mother-in-law and I go to a sister and I tell her, look, this is what, what my mother-in-law said, this, this, this. And she'll say, oh yeah? Well, you should have told her this back. You know, double back, give it to her. How dare she? So I've got to be careful who I'm taking advice from. Some are with taqwa. The Prophet said, the, وسلم, the people of experience, through the experience, they will tell you not this way, do it like this, sister, that's better, right? Or people of um, uh, people of uh, knowledge, right? Who have the knowledge and they implement that knowledge, right? They're acting on that knowledge. And then lastly is people of wisdom. So we can't just go to ask anybody. We've got to think, and I always say, Allah Ta'ala, you know who are the awliya are, I don't know, but send me someone really wise when I have an issue so I can talk to that person or the sister. And I want it to be a woman, uh, Allah SWT. Please don't let it be a man. So I can really get good advice for myself. 
because I want to come to Jannah. I don't want to do something that I'll have to pay for later. Do you get me, sisters? Right? And this special, you might have a special needs a child. Um, I just want to tell you a story. I mean, many sisters have special needs and it's increasing more. In Britain, there are lots and lots of children waiting for special needs schools and there's not places and the government is not giving much funds for them. Uh, it's a very big test for the parents. Like my sister, she died now 15 years ago. She had a son who was mentally disabled. You know, he couldn't talk. All he did was and he couldn't ask for food. He couldn't say, I want to go toilet. And she was always on the go. Like, oh, I got to, got to take him to, to the toilet. Oh, he must be hungry. And um, putting him to sleep, changing his clothes, changing his nappy, very, very hard. And she earned Jannah, I'm sure, inshallah, ta'ala, right? Look at that hadith that's very important, like Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. Like there's a hadith Qudsi, you know, Allah says that insan, Allah will ask us on the day of judgment, I was very hungry, you didn't feed me. And I will say like, Allah, Allah how could I have fed you? You are the Lord of the worlds. And Allah will say so and so of my human being was hungry. Had you fed him, he would have fed me. Then Allah will say, I was thirsty. Same thing. Allah, Allah how could I have fed you? Allah will say those people were thirsty. They didn't have water. Had you put a water well for them or a tap, you would have fed me, my thirst. Then Allah will say, oh, insan, I was ill. You didn't come to visit me. Allah SWT, how could I visit you? You're the Lord of the world. Wasn't so and so ill? Had you gone to visit them, you'd have, you would have found me there. And when we go to hospital to visit someone ill, always remember that. There's a hadith that says, these are all very motivational things to uplift your iman, yeah? To make you feel better. Like uh, 70,000 angels, if I'm going in the morning, 70,000 angels will come out with me. They will spread their wings and they will do dua for me. And while I'm sitting there, they will, the fruits of Jannah will fall on me. And when I come back, the angels will do dua till the night time. And if I go in the evening, the same thing, 70,000 angels coming out with you, you walk on their wings. You go and sit with the ill person and they do the bar for you till morning. And imagine somebody being Ill, Ill in your house. I've got a special needs granddaughter, right? And she's only, and she's also physically disabled. She wasn't walking or talking, but they give a lot of help. Now she started saying a few words. She's five now. And she's got her kidney deteriorated. She had that problem while she was in the womb, mother's womb. And only one kidney is working now. So my son has to keep running uh, even today, he phoned me, you know, just before the talk. And I said, I can't talk. I'll call you after it. Great Ormond Street. They're looking at her kidney. What could they do? And he said, briefly, he said, they can't do anything now. That's happened. The other daughter's born and she's got the same problem. Now, this is a big test for my son and my daughter-in-law. It made me think, you know, last night when I was preparing this, like, subhanallah, you know, Allah must love my daughter-in-law and my son because they need a lot of patience with these children. And my son has to go to work. He has to take time off and he's busy with work and he has to keep on going to hospital. He has to pick them from school. And she jumps a lot and she's always, you know, jumping onto him. He's, um, their house is small, so he sleeps on the sofa. She goes and wakes him up, pokes him, bites him. Big test, isn't it, sister? But subhanAllah, may Allah keep my son like that. He's very, very patient, right? So all these sisters who have, children who are disabled or need help remember that you know you've got a special like um allah wants something good from you allah wants jannah for you so you're being tested but that doesn't mean allah hates you allah loves you if you remember jannah then inshallah you will keep on feeling uplifted yeah inshallah now coming on to uh, sisters have lost their child uh, I've, I told that hadith, isn't it, that on the day of judgment, Allah will say to the child, hold your parents' hands and enter Jannah. So this is a good news, Bushra. I know it's a terrible loss. I haven't lost a child and maybe I don't know if I could take it or not. Very often I think, you know, when my son was younger, he's 54 now, mashallah, and he used to be late coming from college. <laughs> One day, I remember, you know, the helicopter was going overhead, our house. And then the thought came in my mind, Shaitan puts this, oh my God, that might be my son. Maybe he's had an accident. He's, it's past 10 o'clock, it's nearly 11, and maybe they're taking him in the helicopter to the hospital. And I was in a state of anxiety. 
And then my son came home, he was well. So, you know, at that time, my Iman was not very, very strong. Like we, all this, we have love for the, our children, our home, our wealth, our health. These are all things very dear to our heart. And what's very dear to our heart, Allah can test us with that, right? Lots of sisters are tested with their husbands when they go through divorce, like they idolize and they worship their husband. But Allah can see like how much we love the husband and where the love of or his love is. So Allah says anything that's above the love for him, it can become a test. So we have to keep on looking into our heart, our attachments. We have to keep on preparing ourselves. Oh Allah, do not test me with more than I can bear. In Surah Baqarah, the last ayah, Allah, you know my weaknesses. Allah, I'm not very strong in this and this. Please do not test me with more than I can bear. Yeah, alleviate our difficulty for us. So remember that. And um, because otherwise it can lead, lead to depression. It's very important to grieve. Like sisters who have lost their child, uh, I'd advise them, like, give yourself, you know, ask yourself how long you want, right? The answer will come in your heart. Somebody might say two months, three months, one year. So keep a crying time. Don't cry all the time when you get emotional. Uh, say if I'm washing my dishes and it's 12 o'clock in the afternoon, my crying time was 9 to 10 in the morning for 10 minutes. And then it's 3 to 4 and it's uh, 8 to 9 in the evening. So I tell myself, no, no, it's not crying time yet. It's going to be between 3 and 4. So at that time, I have to focus on my dishes. I start doing thicker. And then I sit down and I mourn and grieve for my loss. And I let my tears flow. You know, Prophet uh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when his son died and he was crying. I think I said this before. And his beard was wet and his heart was making noises, you know, like a kettle boiling. Because <laughs> he was crying. And the Sahaba said, oh, Ya Rasulullah, I thought like we have to do sabr and you're crying. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, the, heart, the eyes are sad and the tears are flowing and my heart is grieving, but my tongue will only say that which is pleasing to Allah. And with his tongue, he said, O Ibrahim, I will meet you in Jannah. So that is, you know, we are the ummah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He came with example. So that is what we can say to ourselves. Allah Ta'ala, give me sabr. And Allah heal my heart. Allah is Al-Jabbar. There's one dua. It is, um, I can send it to Sister Shaita, Shaita afterwards. She can put it on your group. Ya Jabbaru Ujbur Bi Khatiri Ya Rabb. And it is the people whose hearts are broken. Allah mends their heart. You know, if I have a very expensive Ming vase and I, it falls down and it breaks and I take it to a specialist and when he repairs it, there will always be the hairline crack right? We'll know that this was broken at one time. But when Allah heals you, Allah says, not even a crack is left. So Allah can heal your heart totally, right? And um, right, that's I've done about loss of a child. And then I've done divorce, inshallah. Uh, do you, there's um, sisters who have been divorced and they're looking to get married again. Uh, Mufti Mank, if you put into Google, YouTube, and other scholars have done the dua as well. Surah Qasas, um, Surah 28, Ayah 24. Rabbi inni lima anzalta alayya min khairin fakir. So you do that dua and you ask Allah's help. And it's if you want a house, you don't have a house, Allah will make it easy for you to have a house. And if you can't get married, Allah will give you a good spouse. And if you, uh, how, and a job. Prophet Musa Islam, there's a story. I won't go into the story now. We don't have that much time. But he was doing this dua when he ran away. Uh, he killed someone by accident. And then he was afraid that uh, Firon will catch him and he's, they'll kill him. So he ran, ran, ran. And he reached, reached a place called Madian. The whole story is in Surah Qasas. He was sitting there and doing this dua. Rabbi inni lima anzalta alayya min khairin fakir. Oh Allah, indeed. I am in dire need of any good that you have to give me. And then he fed the girls. Uh, he was sitting by the river. I won't go in the story now. So Allah gave him a wife and a home and a job with his father-in-law for three years. Right? Uh, no, sorry, for 10 years. I beg your pardon. So this is the story. And uh, I want to come now to the sisters. 
because I'm going to do the meditation on these. That's why I'm telling you all this now. Uh, one of my friends, she tried and tried for many years, you know, to have a child and she couldn't. So she got depressed. And then, mashallah, she went for counseling and she came back and she was a changed person. She was a very good Quran teacher. So what she did, she accepted that she can't have children. Allah wants another role from her. And who are the best people? Anybody can tell me who are the best people? Allah says, who is the best person? The person who reads Quran and teaches it to others, right? So now what she did, she started teaching Quran. And some children, she would pick them up from school, bring them home, half past three till five o'clock. Mothers were working, give them a glass of milk, a biscuit, and teach them Quran. Then the mothers came, that lot went. And 6 to 7.30, the next lot came and her room was full of students who were learning Quran. And look what, how Allah Ta'ala chose her for that honorable job, yeah, to teach the Quran. So Allah chose her and she was amongst the best. When she accepted that she can't have children, but this is what Allah has chosen her for, her role in this world, she became all right and her depression and mashallah, she started saying, staying happy very, you know, calm, tranquil, joyful, hopeful. Yes? Inshallah. And um, lastly, I talked about the difficult child, uh, you know, with special needs, um, physical, mental health, handicap. It's a big test for the parents, but focus on your, on your reward with Allah. I have a teacher. She does uh, sessions with us. You know, she's a counselor as well. She does healing. And she's, her one daughter died, she was special needs. And the other daughter got the same illness, but that with a lot of healing and du'as, um, you know, Allahu nuru samawati walad. She reads that du'a a lot and there's du'as, like the Prophet, there's a du'a, long du'a, Allah give me nur in my bones, nur in my sight, nur in my tongue, nur in my hands, nur in my feet. She does that and she started healing, inshallah she had experience. And then her daughter, mashallah, they said she will die as well. And she's about 12 now nearly. And she's in a wheelchair. She can't walk. But ma mashallah, mentally she can speak and she goes to school. And she's recovered, right? And that's hard for her. But what uh, my teacher said that because they get uh, help, yeah, with the, their um, financial help. So she's got a lady, a maid who comes in, does all her ironing and cleaning. She does only the cooking. In the morning she gets up, washes her face, dresses up nicely has a good like outlook, gratitude to Allah, sends her daughter off to school, and then the maid does all the work. She uses the money for the maid. So she's got a nice clean house, and she's not stressed herself. So when the daughter comes, then she takes over the daughter. So all this is serving Allah. Can you see? Yes? Inshallah. Okay. Now, uh, I'm going to do the, inshallah, the healing with you. And the healing, I'm going to tell you about, you know, there are many places in the Quran where Allah talks about Jannah, isn't it? Sister, um, Sister Ustada, what's your name? Chaista? Sorry, I forget names here. Yeah? Can you type in yes? You know, the Surah Waqiyah, I find that very, very beautiful. Uh, Jazakallah, yes. Surah Waqiyah, Allah Ta'ala talks about, you know, how it will be when you will enter Jannah on that day. You know, the angels will welcome you with beautiful sounds. You know, we, we love, like I used to listen songs before when I wasn't practicing. I loved hearing songs. And then when I started practicing, okay, first we heard is haram. And then we heard, okay, nasheeds, we can listen to them. I love some use of nasheeds. And all those nasheeds, they make me feel close to Allah. So Allah supplicated, you know, brought that, gave us instead of that. So, but on that day, those sounds that will greet you, we haven't heard them in this world. So I just feel like very excited. Like when I enter, I wonder how the angels will call us and what kind of sounds I'm going to hear. But they will say, welcome, welcome. as salam, salam upon all of you. They'll be welcomed. Then there'll be water, rivers flowing by. There'll be drinks, you know, that of honey, milk, all the four different drinks Allah has for you. There'll be gardens and there'll be thrones there. I want you to use this uh, description in your meditation now when I'm going to do it, sisters. Um, you're going to see yourself reclining on the throne. It's entrusted with 
like gold and silver and gemstones, right? You know, like the king's kursi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a kursi as well, isn't it? Subhanallah. So we have, we know how the kursi, you know, the throne of the kings in this world is, it's very ornate, uh, very expensive, very beautifully decorated and uh, very lovely to look at. So you got your throne in the garden and there will be beautiful servants there with eyes like guided, you know, pearls and uh, beautiful eyes and they'll be serving you and delicious fruits and fowls and food. And if you're eating, then you want to eat some more. It will appear and it will be better than the first. And then you eat the second and the third. And every time the taste will get better and better in different days. So you're sitting there. And then there you will be with your families. It's very important to do dua. You know, I do dua every day. Like my husband died seven years ago. And I miss him a lot. But when I miss him, then I start doing dua for him. I read to Nafal. And I do Kula Wallah Had. Um, whoever reads that 10 times, you can read it for your parents, for your loved ones. Allah will build a mansion, palace for them in paradise. So I say, Allah, Tala, please build a mansion for my husband. Please, next to your mansion, please, yes. And I live in the mansion next to your house with him there. And let the next mansion be my parents and then my in-laws and then my brother, sisters. Let us all be there together. All the loved ones you have lost. So when you're doing that meditation, I want you to imagine that you're sitting there with your children whoever you lost and you're eating with them and you're looking at the beautiful flowers and the garden and the sun is shining and the water's flowing by and you're having a wonderful time with them. Does everybody understand what I'm going to do? Please type in yes, sister. Yeah. Sister Shaisla, you can unmute yourself so you can answer to me. I like to have like feedback. Yes, inshallah. Jazakallah. And um, also, now what I want you to do, I want you to all of you to relax wherever you are, in your chair or on the sofa or on the bed and put your back to the back of the sofa, yeah? And or chair and sit right back and sit straight. And when I'm going to do start this meditation, I want you, before you start, to scan your body, you know, start from the head. Have you got a headache? migraine or do you feel like a, a, a stutter stammer you can't speak or your heart is hurting or you got like fire you know also in your tummy in your solar plexus or is the anxiety worry fear uh, in your uh, solar plexus in your uh, warm area and in your stomach area are your legs shaking with fear i want you to notice and then whatever is negative, it, whatever emotion negative, whichever one, I want you to use your hands and pull it out, pull it out, you know, do that action like you're pulling it out of you. This is a very good therapy, right? And you're, there's a bonfire in front of you and you're throwing it into the bonfire. Right, I'm going to give you two minutes to do that. When you've done that, then we'll go to the next step. There'll be steps down and you're going down the steps and we're going to come to the garden then. Right, I'm going to put timer on for two minutes. <clears throat> Auntie, can you please uh, repeat what we have to do? Uh, you have to, all of you now, we're going to start that meditation. Please sit wherever you are, either on a chair or like I'm sitting on my sofa. There, Everybody can see I've got a cushion behind my back. Or either you're on your bed. If you're lying down or sitting down, sometimes people lie down if they're tired. And I want you to start going inside your body with your mind and just imagine that you're looking into your mind and where is it that you got negative emotions of physical pain some people get headaches migraines right or they might feel like something a block you know when we are depressed people they feel like a block they can't speak see i'm touching my neck so when they speak they stutter and stammer a bit like uh, i can't speak that's how they speak right or they have a pain in their heart, this area. Or this is the solar plexus. They might have like a, you know, when we get ulcer from all the anger that we're bottled up in, frustration, anger, frustration. It gives us like burning sensation here. And when I uh, eat something, I get a pain there, right? Or if I feel some um, like guilt or I feel like I'm not good enough, we feel that in our stomach area where the womb is, you know, just below the belly button. 
And after that, I might feel, you know, where the bikini line is, I might feel like fear, worry, anxiety. And then I might feel the fear, worry, anxiety in my legs too. Like my legs are shaking. So everybody understood that now. Once you identified what negativity you're feeling, it might be fear, sadness, uh, overwhelm, tiredness. I want you to start, look at myself. Can you see me? I'm doing an action. Let me, I'm pulling it out. I'm pulling it, I'm pulling it out. All my stuttering. Yes. There's a bonfire and I imagine I'm throwing that negativity, my anger, my frustration, my fear, sadness, all my uh, worries into the fire. Okay. And it's, it's becoming like cinders. It's burning. Like Allah's going to take care of it. You don't want to keep it in your body anymore. Understood? Yes, got it. Okay. Okay, I'm going to put the timer for two minutes now. Just keep on. And as you're sitting there, with your back relaxed to the chair, just scan your body and notice where is it in your body that you are feeling any negative feelings or emotions or physical pain. It might be sadness. You might have a color. It might be in a form, might be like water, smoke. Uh, it might be like wood, piece of wood. Pull it out, pull it out. Use your hands. And there's a bonfire burning before you. This is the bonfire of Allah. And whatever you throw in there is going to change form. You know, when we, the iron, when we melt it and melt it, we extract the gold from it. There's a very little bit of gold. So you're going to, all that gold is going to be ex extracted from the fire that you're throwing into it. Through all that rubbish from inside you. And you can breathe it out. Breathe. Breathe your fear out, your sadness, your loss, your grief. And if you're angry, angry, you can shake your hands and shake your feet and shake it all out, shake it out. Keep on breathing it out. Just notice where is it that you're feeling all these negative emotions or feelings that you don't like, that make you feel down and make you feel cry, make you feel hopeless and helpless and sad and so heavy. You're heavy. Throw all that heaviness off your chest, off your shoulders. Throw it into the bonfire. Empty yourself. So you're becoming light and a light. The noor of Allah is going into you, is coming down from the heavens. And you're feeling so much light and lighter. And there's light everywhere. And as when you got rid of all that's negative inside you, just see some stairs in front of you. And I want you to start walking down the stairs and as you're walking down and down, down you have come to a beautiful field stretching in front of you and there is a gate and the angels are standing there welcoming you salam salam this is your own special place for all that suffering you went through while you were in this world. 
This is a place of final rest and abode where there shall be no harm, no lurid talk, no fighting, no arguments. Peace and peace. Where all the sad feelings and all your losses, those feelings will be taken away from you and Allah will replace them with peace. As you enter, there in the field is a beautiful throne. And in this throne are beautiful gemstones and diamonds and is decorated with gold and silver. And it's got beautiful plush silk seat for you to sit on, soft. velvety, beautiful colors, your own special design that you like. And I want you to go and sit on the seat. And as you look around, the angels are there and they're bringing the tables and the plates and lining beautiful food for you there to enjoy. And as you're sitting there, you look ahead and there's some people coming towards you. And I don't know who they are, but you know who they are. People you've missed and who you want to hang around with, who you want to show your love and affection to. And just look at that joy in your heart as you look at a loved one's face. As you're having a reunion with that person whom you may be missing a lot and you can invite them to come and sit and the angels are putting more chairs there. And this is a place where you can share your joy with them and tell them how pleased you are at having this reunion. And you can sit there and start enjoying that delicious food the angels have laid out for all of you and you know you've got a choice you can come back here every day and enjoy this this beautiful space this healing tranquil peaceful place just for you And I don't know what you might be thinking or doing. Just observe your hands and your feet and how they are shining with the light of Allah. And everywhere, it's like a beautiful place. But you haven't seen such a beautiful place in this world. If anybody's seen a five-star or a Seven Star Hotel is even better than that. Get into your best imagination. Be there for as long as you want to. I'm going to give you five minutes and you can say anything you want to say to your loved ones. Express your love any way you want to, maybe a hug or a kiss. Or a pat on the back, shaking hands. And as you're there, you can thank Allah too. For allowing you to be here, to meet your loved ones, to have this beautiful, joyful experience. And as you sit there, you're filling up with hope. The light is coming down from everywhere onto you with. Hope and love, 
peace, tranquility, strength, strength in your mind, in your heart, in your limbs, and you've got strong legs, it's going down from your heart into your stomach, healing all the places with the love of Allah as it's flowing through you. Allah is al Jabbar, and he's sending this healing light into you, way down into your feet, and it's going down from your toes into the Mother Earth where you're sitting and all around you, and it's coming out of your head and your eyes and your ears, your nose and your hands and your fingers. Mm. The light is going around you, above you and below you, and spreading way, way, all the way back from there into your home where you live in this world. Spreading into your bedrooms, your living room, the kitchen and your bathroom, everywhere into your house, into the walls. And it's going out from the roof, going up to the heavens and the light from the heavens, coming down and going up again, coming down into you and into your loved ones. And you can hold your hands with your loved one who's there because in about a couple of minutes, I'm going to ask you to come back with all these gems, peace, strength, tranquility, hope, love, satisfaction, pleased with Allah inside you. Keep breathing. Breathe the light into every cell in your blood, your bones and your veins and your flesh. Spreading into right from your head all the way down into your body to your feet. Keep breathing. Breathe it in, that light of Allah, with all these qualities inside you. And as you breathe out, is circling around you and spreading into your home. And now you can start saying your goodbyes. And when you're ready, you can come back to your room where you're sitting with all these gifts with you. When you're ready, you can wake up. And I'm wondering how many sisters are excited to share their journey and about the gifts they brought back with them. When they're ready to share Shaista, they can give us feedback of the outcome. Yes, inshallah. I'll, uh, I'll keep a I out in shower.
it was mashallah very relaxing i almost uh yeah i, I almost went to sleep but i <laughs> subhanallah felt very meditative and very relaxing sleep. it's very easy you don't have to do it exactly how i said even if you forget just ask allah allah what do i need what are my needs and allah will you know deep inside you what you want Allah will make it possible for you. You know, when we share with others the things that help us, then it reinforces all the positive. Because when we hear it again and again and different things, we also get ideas from each other to heal. That is the benefit of sharing. Mashallah, um, some sisters are saying that it was very soothing and another sister said that she was crying all the time, sobbing, alhamdulillah, mashallah. So anybody wants to physically tell us? Oh, mashallah, Sa Sada Samia is here too. I didn't realize you were there. Oh, subhanallah. So, so. Maybe Sada Samia will share something with us now. She wanted to do something, isn't it? Uh, she oh, can well, I, I wanted her to, if she's available. Let me see. Come, I don't see you on the. Um, if uh, if you're if you would like, and if anyone would like to share, please uh, let me know. Um, and Estela Samia, if you don't mind sharing your. Uh, let me see. Where are you? I can't find you in the participants to unmute you. Uh, her name is Samia something. A surname. Um, yeah, I don't... check. She she wrote the last. Uh, I'm unable to unmute. She's saying. Yeah. Oh, okay. There you are. I see. Assalamualaikum. Yes. Uh, that was a very powerful exercise, and Subhanallah, thank you so much for all these gems that um, you know, I just love covering how you covered like the Islamic perspective with the like emotional breath work, which, uh, you know, subhanAllah, I think we don't see the two together often. And I love how you bridge them. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, I, I felt like it was releasing, like the minute you told us to lay back um, and just imagine and close our eyes, subhanAllah, I think um, it, rem it reminded me of how, like, I, I don't think we give our ch uh, self chances, enough chances to pause. Like our whole life, especially these days, is go, 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 finish, 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 yeah. deadline. And subhanAllah, just you don't even have to leave, you know, or do anything to begin the process of healing. You just have to go inward. Um, and funny. I think, yes. you know, it, it's such a rahmah because I feel like so much of life is go outward, do this, talk to this. And Allah's like, go within. You know, Allah invites us to. Um, you know uh, Sister Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says like yeah. go inward, contemplate even on one ayah. He doesn't ask us to read a lot of Quran. Read yeah. one ayah but think about it all day. Think deep, deep, deep. And then he says one hour of contemplation reflection, pondering is equal to 70 years of ibadah. That's yeah. when we start to realize things and keep it as me time. You know, going inward is very important. As Ashallah. mothers and wives must do Auntie Zaida, I don't know if you know that. Carry on, sorry. No, I, I no no. I and I don't know if you know Sava Sami. She teaches Quran reflection. I think you just understood that from her from her hal. Subhanallah. You know how she said that. Yeah, Mashallah, <laughs> that's yes, amazing. Yes. So yeah, she she Quran. specializes that in teaching oh, a women to uh, reflect on Quran. Mashallah. Oh, Mashallah. So you you good. got that from her from just a Zoom call. <laughs> Mashallah. Yes. Yes. So her face is so relaxed as well. So calm, mashallah. No, thank you so much for um you know helping us do this um exercise of It's very healing and, and grounding and just very really releasing. Um and it made me like uh, you gave me a different perspective of the ayah, like don't they reflect within themselves? So I feel like now I see that verse as an invitation to heal, uh, which I never saw that before, subhanAllah. Mashallah. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. If you want to, sister wants to do this another time, 
so the ch sisters learn properly. It's very easy once they learn it. And uh, they can, it's like hypnotizing yourself. We're always hypnotizing ourselves by saying, I'm stupid, oh, I can't do it, I'm fat, I'm ugly, I'm guilty. So then we start believing that the heart has an effect. The thought affects the heart and feelings come, come in within us then. And then we act from that, then our behavior. So if we want to change our behavior, we change our thought. Good thought, doesn't matter. Okay, I've been stupid in the past. I can be better now. Allah can forgive me. I can ask forgiveness. Um, I don't need to repeat that mistake again. So, you know, we, we are doing astaghfirullah all the time, but then we think like, oh, I don't know if Allah's forgiven me or not. But then why won't he forgive you? He said, I forgive you. So believing in those things, taking yourself towards positivity is very important. I am as much there thinks of me, servant thinks about me. So having good opinion from Allah all the time, inshallah. Yeah. Uh, also, when you spoke of your granddaughter who has a disability, so actually my daughter is missing one kidney. She also has special yeah. needs. I'll show you her. Say, Salaam Alaikum, Mariam. Can you say, Salaam Alaikum? Subhanallah. Can you say, Salaam Alaikum? Mariam? How are you, my darling? Oh, Subhanallah. How old is Mariam? She's eight years old. Mashallah. Are you eight? Yeah, you're eight years old. So beautiful. A sister like Allah must have chosen you, you know, for this special deed. Yeah? You must be very special to Allah because not everybody gets these tests. And he knew that you could take it and he gave you that test. And may Allah not put more burden on you than you can bear, inshallah. We need to ask that Allah all the time. You know from Surah Baqarah, the last ayah, Allah do not burden me with more than I can bear. Yeah. Inshallah, may Allah make it easy for you and for everyone else. I mean, all of us. I, mean, I mean, may Allah make us worthy of the blessings he gives us, inshallah. Amen. Amen. You know, I'll just tell you a funny story. You know, my sister, I was telling you about, she had a mentally handicapped son. And my sister was 75 when she died. And her son was 51. He died two years later. She always used to worry about him. What's going to happen to him when I'm gone? What's going to happen? And I used to say, look, Allah created him. He came from you, but you don't own him. Allah is more worried than you about him. Allah will make a way. And uh, she had to have a bypass, you know, before she died. And when she was lying on the bed, he used to just come and fall on her, you know. He was so used to his mother. In the last days, she had to stick, you know, with her. And then she, that's the only time I saw her. She used to hold the stick and say, stay away, stay away from me. <laughs> Don't jump on me. And then when he died, mashallah, his brother looked after him so well. And his wife, he like, inshallah reward them it's very very rewardable you know like caring for someone who's ill isn't it you got yes. the ill person in your home 24 7 yes. you're and the angels are always present there with you inshallah inshallah jazakallah khair for that perspective alhamdulillah jazakallah khairan thank you so much uh, jazakallah khairan to um auntie zaida i i enjoy that so much i'll be honest uh, subhanallah i haven't had the 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 like the meditation i think since sarah did it sarah matic uh mike you know she had kind of we did it i think two months it was two months after uh two or three months after the whole thing with uh, Gaza started and okay. uh, we, were, we were just yeah we were very just everybody was very saddened right broken yeah, yeah. very depressed and i remember i i told her is you know i remember i was telling her you know every time i Every single night I see my daughter, I cry because I'm like, you know, alhamdulillah, she's, she's, she's alive in there. And you yeah. seeing just all these, um, you know, parents holding their deceased children. Yeah. And yeah. so she did a, um, uh, she did a release, uh, emotional release. It was beautiful, okay. but I haven't done one since then. It was like uh, several months. And uh, so just exactly okay. Then it was just, it was beautiful. Like just a lot of, oh, um, you know, just uh, calming, so calming. And you just, it, it's, uh, as Ustada Samia said, it's something that, you know, it's something so easy, but we don't give us, give ourselves that time to do it, right? I feel like we don't um, grant ourselves like that moment of like that healing and that, you know, just, just for reminding us. You know, 